Welcome to the channel everybody. Today I have this Franer Cascadia. This is a day cab with a DD13 engine, small engine with a small truck. The problem with the DD13 engines are that uh, they're really hard to work. I think not many people like to work on those and I am not an exception. I don't like to work on these trucks because see how it looks it looks everything compact half of the engine is inside half of the engine is outside so it is not so funny um the problem in this truck was having was check engine light on and many different type of codes about uh sensors and stuff like that working here working there so um a uh, we have to check, you know, I did check computer, I went through the whole system and everything and I find out then uh, the hardness was a problem. The wiring hardness you can see has been replaced, it's a new hardness Then I just already installed on this vehicle. Um, the hardness was, um, was misplaced, the old hardness was from areas that didn't need to go, it was over here and all that and that was the reason why it caused them the hardness go bad. Um, also, this truck is a truck that goes all over the uh, bad roads, you know, asf asphalt, and uh, it, it works with construction workers and stuff like that. So the thing is, like trucks like this, they actually don't do very well when it comes to stuff like that with harnesses and stuff like that. Um, and. Uh, because of that, because of the chicken line and all that, that's the reason why I replaced the harness. So I'm going to show you how a harness looks when it is completely bad, completely destroyed. So I have the wiring right here with me. Um, as I say, I did replace the harness after inspecting the truck and everything. But I would say, I mean, then just because you're getting a cut with a sensor or something like that, you have to crown and replace the harness. You have to diagnose your truck free. So be sure to do that. If you are not a mechanic, just be sure to uh, get a help. And if you are a mechanic, be sure to know what you're doing. So uh, it's very important then uh, you uh, know why you're going to replace the harness. In this case, you can clearly see that the harness, it is not in a good shape. Harness, it is in a really bad shape. And that is the reason why uh, it, it needed to be replaced because uh, the harness was not uh, looking well. And, um, and yeah, I mean, like uh, it was obvious and the cause of this problem was that. But in some cases, the harness can be in a good shape and you can replace them and that is not the cause of the problem so that's the reason why so once you replace the harness you have to check if the harness was the real reason of the problem because you already said and the harness was the problem and you have to investigate if the harness was the real cause of the problem so i did that's the reason why i'm doing this video and showing you how you have to inspect most of the time uh, the harness goes bad in this area. This is the plug, the main plug that connects to the computer, to the main brain of the engine. From here, this plug, it divides each line for each sensor, depending on what signal needs. So everything goes around, see, the plug goes, and then it goes to all these plugs over here and there and there. So. This is the main one. You have another plug on the side of the computer, a small one, but that, that is only for communications between the computer of the engine and the cap. And also you have another plug over here. Let's see, where is this plug? Right here, this one. This one is another plug for communications between the cap and the computer and other components like the computer of the emissions and stuff like that. So uh, this, is uh, the reason why you have to investigate because sometimes you can have problems with the wiring that comes from here, from the cab or from the uh, computer of the uh, emissions or uh, you can have problems with the other plug on the other side and you can think there is something with the wiring, you replace the wiring and the problem is ceased. That's the reason why it is important to check. But we have the plug over here, as I say, and most of the time, when the harness goes bad, goes bad over here. 
this is the area where the hardness goes bad and I'm going to show you how it looks you can clearly see over here the damage of the harness see this is one damage of the harness how the cable is all completely exposed because the cover of the wire is completely uh, away it's like uh, it faded away so uh, this uh, cover is completely bad it wear out and we have another one over here see then it's not super bad but it's getting to the point then it needs replacement and that's how it goes i mean there is some others right here there is another one see then it has somewhere and um, that's how it goes there is one here and there is another there and there is another there the problem happens when these two wires over here they start making contact to i mean each other like this and once they start making contact in each other they just uh expose the material the conducting material which is the wire and they start rubbing each other and then cuts start to appear like cuts like circuit low circuit high or signal erratic or, si or, or invalid, invalid signal and stuff like that because this could be a positive this could be a negative but these are controlled by the computer so uh, they are not fully positive or fully negative they are going to be controlled by different devices inside the computer so that way they cannot do a short so once these ones get in contact to each other they are going to be like uh, the computer is going to notice right then this is getting signal from another so if this one is negative and this is positive the negative is going to ground the positive so the computer is going to tell you then there is a ground signal and when the ground signal happens they're going to have the code about the ground signal and you want to have the code in the specific sensor then that belongs so this could be for the egr this could be for the uh the timing sensors this could be for the coolant level sensor or stuff like that so that is the reason why uh this is uh the cause of the problems i mean like uh, depending on what type of problem you have that is depending on what wire is the one is going to go bad not all the problems are the same just remember that because you can have a low voltage because one of these wires is rubbing to each other or you can have a high voltage because the high source which is the positive is uh, rubbing with a signal also you can have a ground signal which means then the signal can be proving with a ground or the ground shorted to battery which means then the battery is stronger than the ground and is rubbing against each other so you now have many different types of uh, problems with the wiring so it is good to investigate why this happened in this case we can clearly see where the problem was so that's the way you gotta do hey, as i say the, it depends on what type of problem you have that is uh, what is going to give you the uh, knowledge on what you have to check because you can replace the hardness and probably the hardness is not the problem most of the time when it comes to uh, uh, sensor problems like a, we can say uh like a like as i say short signal or the sensor is not working well or something like that if you replace the sensor and it still doesn't do anything if you replace the egr valve and it's still doing the same thing most of the time it is just going to be the wiring specifically on uh dd15s dd13s dd16s engines because it is uh very uh common to see this problem because the harness is made for very it is not a cheap material but it's a material that doesn't resist uh, vibrations inside so when this vib vibration start happening here like this the wiring start wearing inside the cable the cover start wearing and then the uh, material then conducts the uh, energy start getting exposed to one to each other and that causes the problem uh, and that's the reason why I'm telling you then uh, you have to um, just be sure because this piece is not as um, 
a cheap piece. This is like $450 to replace and plus the labor. The labor is super intensive to replace this harness. It is a lot of labor to replace, especially on a truck like this, then it's a short nose. But if you have a regular Cascadia, regular truck, it's, it still is hard, but it's not as hard as like this one. And um, it, it, that's the reason why uh, you have to actually like check with your computer and everything. Uh, not all the cuts are going to be the same. Some cuts are going to appear, then it's not a widening problem, and some cuts are going to appear, then it is a widening problem. And the solution could be something else, completely something else. Uh, uh, so, as I say, I mean, I, I, can, I can give you details on what problems you can get, but it is hard. That's why I'm telling you, then if you get cuts like shorted to ground, shorted to battery, or signal erratic, or signal to high source, or signal to low source, cuts like that, it's mostly because of the wiring is the one that is actually letting um, some other signal from the exterior go inside to the signal to belongs to that specific sensor and that tells to the computer then that is not the right way to work so that is how you want to actually start um, investigating about what could be the cause of the problem on your engine because it is not going to be the same solution for all the trucks or it's not going to be the same cut for the trucks and probably here is going to be the problem. So uh, probably you can fix the wiring if you can see it. For example, like we can see then this wire is broken right here, right? It is connecting to ground. So we can cut it and put a little connector over here and make it work. We can do that. But it is hard to actually remove all these covers because in this case, this harness doesn't have all the covers. So it's hard to remove all the covers once the harness is inside the truck and uh, you won't be able to do just like that. It, if, if you can see where the, uh, uh, the shore is, it is easy, but if you cannot see it, that is going to be hard. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I mean, like, yeah, you can fix it, but it's not so easy as it looks. I mean, it's going to be cheaper if you fix it, yes, because you won't be uh, spending that much money uh, replacing the harness plus the labor because you, if you can fix it without removing the harness will be good I wish I can do that too sometimes but sometimes you cannot tell where the problem is because see how many cables are here I mean it's almost impossible to know where the problem is right not until you open it completely and start checking cable by cable that is when you know where the problem was but I mean, if you remove it and then you have to put it back, probably something else, because you can fix the same hardness, you can remove it, uh, fix the, the cable that was broken, and then put the, same, the, the wiring back, and that could help in a way that can give you more time to work, but that doesn't mean that the hardness is gonna go bad. It will go bad, maybe from another area this time. So it's better to replace it with a new one, and uh, that will solve the problem for a while, maybe for around 500, 600,000 miles, or depending on the conditions, how you drive the vehicle. But uh, I guess this is all, all my uh, recommendations about wiring on these engines, DD13s, DD15s, DD16s. It's very common, as I say, these kind of problems. But uh, it is up to you to actually know if it is going to be the cause, I mean, it's going to be the right repair, replacing the harness or not. That's right, it's very important that you follow a good, um, investigation there are many ways to fix this problem specifically with the hardness many reasons why the hardness was bad and if you have your own experience about this you can share it on the comments of this video or if you have any other ideas opinions recommendations or simply you just want to comment please use the comment section below because you can help many different people including myself about any problem that you had because that's experience that we can learn from you as well just the same way i'm doing with these videos if you want to send support to my channel, check the description of the video. I have details how to send support to my channel so I can do more videos like this, helpful videos for all of you that want to learn more about trucks. Also, it's very important that you like the video, you share it with anybody that wants to learn more about trucks. And thank you for watching.